Hello, Rebecca. How are you? Hi, Sarah. I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm so excited to be here with you today. Rebecca is the owner of Design and Dorn uh, Beating Studio in Tucson, Arizona. She has agreed to give us a fantastic class today online. Uh, she has a beautiful necklace that she's going to be showing to us and going through the step-by-step -step process to put it together. I think some of you have even possibly gotten the kit already and may be designing along with us. Uh, just a quick reminder, after it's live, you can go back and rewatch this anytime. Then you can pause and replay and pause and replay to your heart's content. Um, so don't feel like you have to keep up if you do have your beads out and you're planning to design along. Um, just give yourself some grace and realize that Rebecca's already put this together probably multiple times before. And um, she's a fantastic teacher, but we're always sort of on a time limit when we're doing videos. So if it scoots along faster than you want it to, just be patient and know you'll be able to go back and watch it uh, time and time again. So um, Rebecca, I'm so excited to see you. I got to visit with you when I was in Tucson and we yeah, got to great. talking about this uh, design. And um, I'm really excited to be able to bring it to everybody. Uh, what inspired the design that you're going to show us today? Sparkles. Everything sparkly. I, I was playing with uh, stringing up some beads on soft flags and I wanted just maximum sparkle. And every time I was, you know, I thought I was, I'm like, but could it be more sparkly? <laughs> <laughs> or more sparkly. Well, I love a good sometimes I just I just like right. I just wanted it super sparkly. So that that was the inspiration was maximum sparkle. I love that. I'm super excited. Um, so what else has been going on? We were talking a little bit before the video started, and it sounds like you have launched some private video classes. Can you tell us a little bit more about what's going on with that? Yeah, so uh, this is something really exciting that I've, I've had in the works for a while. Um, we're doing video classes, and initially, you know, when when like video classes really just like launched like big time in 2020, I, I was a little bit skeptical of like, could that be as good as an in-person class? And I started playing with it and filming it, and it turns out there are actually really a lot of advantages of video classes, especially for like really big projects. Um, what I love about it is that the way I have my camera set up, it's like you're seeing everything like through my eyes. Um, mm -hmm. So it's like super detailed. It's even better than, you know, if we were like all standing together at, you know, like the beating button show, I would be, you know, beating on the table and like the best view would be if you were standing behind me and mm -hmm. looking over my shoulder. Um, I don't know about you. I can't actually see like a size 11 Delica from like three feet away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, that's what's cool about the videos, right? You just get to like see the super details. And then what we're doing on our video classes, they're all pre-recorded. So when you buy the class, uh, you're going to get links to all the different videos. And I've broken every step into a separate video. So you can like zoom mm -hmm. in just on the topic that you're working on right then. And you can pause it, you can rewind it, but you also don't have to like be scrolling back and forth through like really long videos. I'm keeping the clips pretty short so you can get right to the part you're working on. And I think that's going to make it really, really convenient for when you're working on your project. Yeah, I think there are so many benefits to learning from a video that you don't get in person. There's some really lovely things in person of just the camaraderie yeah. and just there's something special about being with other people and the energy that everyone's giving to each other in a space. But when you really need the detail and you need to really see what's happening up close, there's just like nothing better than having a video that you can control and like replay and watch mm -hmm. and replay and pause and really look at it and think about it. It really, really helps. So you have two different options right now, but you'll be expanding it. 
Yeah, absolutely. We have two video classes right now. And like you say, there is something magical about the in-person classes. So we're actually going to start doing in-person classes again in the summer. So I don't have details on that yet. But, you know, if you follow us on Facebook or get our emails, that's where I'll be announcing the in-person classes. Um, but I can show you uh, the projects we have right now for the video classes. We have two of them. So this one is the picturesque. This one is, is still in pre-order, but the videos are actually going to be launching May 12th. So you don't have to wait very long at all um, for the picturesque. And we are sold out of the picturesque kits, but you are absolutely welcome to gather your own materials, right? This uses really basic supplies. These are size 11 Delicas, three millimeter fire polish, got some tear cast spacers in here. And then for your pendant, you just need something with a six millimeter bail. That's, that's the only like critical thing is the size of the bail, but that's a pretty common bail size. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. could put together your own, your own color choices, your own special pendant. And what I like about this project is you learn a lot of really great technical skills. I would recommend that you already know how to do some kumihimo, but it's really straightforward. Like if you've done, you know, the effervescent or even just like a beaded rope, you could do this. Delicas are actually really easy to braid with. So you're going to be braiding along here. The back. Oh, yeah. What's going on back there? That's Ooh. a magnet. Wow. That is fancy. peyote stitch, peyote stitch end cap cover. So you're going to learn how to do that too. So your end caps perfectly match your braid. Yes, that looks great. Right. Bonnie, we're glad you're here too. I see everybody kind of checking in. We've got a lot of great friends ready to hang out. Awesome. Show us the second class that you have there. So the second one is the soiree. And this one is my baby. I um I spent a very, very long time designing this necklace. I had like an image in my mind and I <laughs> I just had to like work through like bringing it into the world. Mm -hmm. So you have um, a check glass button that serves as both pendant and the clasp. And Boy, again, we're braiding gorgeous. with, we're braiding with Delicas again. And then we're embellishing. So here you're actually going to be sewing to the braid. So it's kumihimo and bead stitching and then some stringing down here for the tassel. We do have um, some kits left of the soiree. They are all limited edition. Um, they are actually numbered. Like they, they are numbered like a, like a fine art print. So we do have a few of these left. And they're all just exquisite, right? So we started with the button as the the focal point, mm -hmm. and then we built colors, blended, yeah. blended all the colors around these buttons. Ooh. And the buttons they just shift and show all these different colors depending on how the light hits them. So that's that's the soiree. Because when I see that little shape on the button, I can only think of Mickey Mouse. Because <laughs> I see secret Mickeys everywhere I go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those are really beautiful. I love the colors. The buttons are absolutely stunning. They're so And if so you're beautiful. if you're not into secret Mickey, um, there are it's some that is, have but it's just what I, I see. <laughs> I know. I see like little, little clovers, um, but I do have like flowers as well. Oh, pretty. Very yeah. pretty. I love that. Okay. Well, let's uh, switch over um, while you get a little set up over there. I'm just going to talk for a minute. It is your last day to order your Czech glass curated collection. Um, it's really not your last day. I gave John numbers uh, based on your orders so far. And I gave a little bit of a cushion. So now what's going to happen is we're going to shift into we only have so many extra. 
And, um, and I didn't make a huge cushion because I gave you guys a long time to order, but I do have a little bit of a cushion left. So if you want to order, get your order in as soon as possible um, so that you can get one. Because once they sell out, that will be all we have because uh, he's already purchasing my beads over there in the Czech Republic and then having them strung and shipped to me. And then we're going to package them up and get them out to everyone who has ordered. Thank you to everybody who trusted me um, and John to put something together. I took your advice uh, yesterday. I tried to do a collection of items. So yes, there will be flowers. Yes, there might be fans. Yes, there might be petals. You know, the things that people really gravitated towards, maybe not everybody, but most people seem to gravitate towards, I took a closer look at those things. And there's a little bit of everything. And then some of the fire polish to sort of play around with and match with the uh, bigger, more unique shapes. Um, I think it's going to be really pretty. I am thinking about throwing in a little bit of soft flex uh, once I see where the bill comes in for the beans, because <laughs> it's really hard. Um, it's really hard to order. I, I know it's um, it's hard to explain, but the way that they sell it in a mass has to be calculated down into single beads and then into strands. And it's very hard to know how much I actually spent. So <laughs> we'll see what it looks like. And if uh, if it works out okay, I might add in a couple soft flex items as well. So don't be surprised if you see those too. And um, I'm just really excited. I hope you guys love it. I think it's going to turn out really good. But get your order in for that at softflexcompany.com. Also, if you didn't notice, down below on the ticker, we've got a $20 off a kit order over a hundred dollars on Rebecca's website, and the discount code for that is Softflex Friends, and you can see her website down there as well. Um, we are hosting Design and Adorn today. They're doing a project that uses Softflex beading wire, and Rebecca has traditionally sold Softflex beading wire as well. So it's a collaboration. If you want to purchase something from Rebecca, you're going to go to designandadorn.com. If you're purchasing from Softflex, like the curated uh, check glass mix, then you're going to go to softflexcompany.com. All right, let's flip over to Rebecca and check out this awesome necklace that she's putting together with us today. All right, so this is the effervescent. Here, let me like pop up a nice picture of it real quick. So in the center, we have seven strands of crystal bicones all strung on soft flex wire. And then we're going to cover up our, our work, right? Our, our crimps are going to be covered with some cones here. And then we're going to tie on our super lawn and do some kumihimo. Now at the intro, um, Sarah was reminding you that, um, this will be available for replay. And I'm just going to let you know that this is a little bit like a cooking show where some steps will like magically appear from the side um, because I don't have a lot of time to show you all the different things that are happening in this necklace. So the centerpiece where we have all of these crystals, you start by stringing all of the strands individually. So get yourself a bunch of bead stoppers. I've already pre-strung most of them. I'm just gonna do the last one together. So I have a bead stopper at the end of this. I'm pretty sure Sarah sells these at softflex.com and I love these to just keep my beads from falling off. And I put this about two inches from the end and I'm gonna start stringing. I'm gonna have five seed beads here. And one of the things I like about working with Softflex on a project like this is that you don't need a needle, right? You can just like string directly on there. And then I'm gonna have an alternating pattern of crystals and seed beads. And I'm gonna use 30 crystals. I just counted out my crystals before I, I started. So for each strand, I just counted out 30, put them in a pile. That way I don't have to be counting while I'm stringing. Um, that's what works best for me 
while I'm working by myself. And I knew that's what would work best for me while trying to talk at the same time because I'm very bad at counting and talking. Um, I'm going to be looking down, uh, stringing these beads here. So if any like questions or things pop up on the screen, Sarah, just let me know. I'm looking down. Will. Um, so what made you decide on these colors? Oh, it's the time of year, right? So we put together, um, I think I have like nine colorways. And I just, when I put together a color mix, I like to have a dominant color. So I usually pick that first. And then I start picking accent colors to go with it. So this one, it's this like darker turquoise. That was my, my mm -hmm. main color. And then I'm like, okay, let's throw some of this. Like, this is a really like different bicone, right? You don't have a lot of opaque bicones, mm -hmm. but I think they're kind of fun as an accent. Mm -hmm. So I wanted some of that. I love turquoise and lavender together. So that's how that came together. And then we're putting this on, I can't remember what color soft flex this is, but it's a turquoise color soft flex. Pretty. And you said yeah, you so for 11 colorways? I think we, I think it's nine. Yeah, there we go. I made a graphic. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Ooh. We've got nine colorways. Ooh, there's so many good colorways. Where did you learn about color, Rebecca? Like, did you take classes on it? Or is it just a natural thing that you developed over life? Um, so I've never taken classes specifically on, on color, but I have taken many, many, many art classes over the course of my life. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, I, I just keep throwing my, my beads. Um, I, I love art and I love color. And so I took lots of classes in painting and drawing. And I'm just really bad at both of those things. <laughs> um, <laughs> like it, it doesn't matter how much like formal education I get in that subject. I cannot have an image in my mind and then translate it onto a piece of paper where someone else goes, ah, oh, yes, I, I see what you were doing there. Um, like everything I do, they're like, oh, what an interesting abstract you've painted. I'm like, no, that's, <laughs> that's a mountain goat. <laughs> um, I would so I try feel you, which is why I'm laughing. Cause I, yeah. So, oh, so I also tried ceramics, yeah. both of my parents, um, used to be big into ceramics, so I tried ceramics and sculpting and like same same thing. They'd be like, "Oh, hey, um, so you made like a snake?" I'm like, "No, it, it's a it's gonna be a pot," but it never like ended up being <laughs> what it was supposed to be. And so I just like tried all all of these different art things because I just I love I love art, I love color, and I like wanted to yeah. you know ex express myself that way. And then I found beading mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, hey, this is amazing. This I is can, what I do. <laughs> this is what I do, right? This, this is it. I, I can, I can do color. I can, I can envision a project and then like make it so I can mm -hmm. bring it into existence. Uh -huh. And that's, that's awesome. That is what I love about, about beading and about, Kumihimo in particular is that I if can. If anyone else out there identifies visualize. with this story like I do, click that like sign or that heart sign and let us know you're with us. That um, beating really gives you the opportunity to be creative uh, in a way that some other mediums don't. And some people, it just fits better, you know? And I mean, you know, it's not to say that you have to be good at a thing to do it. You absolutely do not have mm -hmm. to be good at a thing to do it and to get joy from it. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, right. Right. Like I still I still like draw things and do other stuff like that. But I don't yeah. get like the same level of satisfaction when there's a disconnect between like my vision and the finished uh -huh. project. 
Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, there are people out there, too, that are like a jack of all trades. Like uh, Kristen is a great example, mm -hmm. my coworker. I For saw sure. her painting yeah. right behind you. Like she can make beautiful yes. jewelry. She can also make beautiful paintings. She can also make beautiful mixed media. And she, she can mm -hmm. right? really like do it all. Um, but I, I struggle a little more, um, especially when it comes to things like painting or drawing. Yes. Yes. Now I, I can paint things like a solid thing. Like I can paint the wall. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, totally. and like like I'm generally handy right like I can I can build things and stuff I just uh for my birthday I went to North Carolina and took a women's beginning carpentry class Ooh. and I I learned how to how to use all these power tools I used a, a table saw and a miter saw oh, and a jigsaw and a circular cool. saw and then made a shelf and that was what? that was really cool that's awesome. Where did you even find out about that? Um, I Googled women's woodworking. And you know what? There are not a lot of options in that area. Yeah. Right. Um, but I, I found this school in, in North Carolina. And I'm like, that's cool. awesome. I stalked them online for like two years before like finally <laughs> getting in. Well, I mean, North Carolina is kind of far away from Arizona. It's a big, yeah, it's a big trip. You're like, is this worth it or not? <laughs> right. It's a big trip. I had to like, I, I drove across the country with all my power tools and like drove back with my power tools and my wood shelf that I built. <laughs> all right, guys, check it out. Um, I have, I've strung so of seven of these here. Now the thing I want to, to point out as a tip. So one of them is longer than the others. In the in the instructions, it'll tell you that. You cut one of your cords two inches longer so that we have some working room on our, um, on our loops. But notice that all of my bead stoppers here are some sort of blue, except for this one. Uh, this is the odd one out with the green and the orange. That's so that in a minute here, I can easily tell uh, which one is the long one? So since we put our bead stoppers two inches from the end, each one of these pieces of soft flex has like a long end and a short end, like a long tail and a short tail. So I'm gathering all of the long tails together and I'm trying While to be, you know, that, uh, neat Phyllis and was wondering which city in North Carolina did you visit? for the carpentry? Um, it's in Weaverville, which um, the next closest, like bigger city is Asheville. Mm. Oh, that's pretty. It's, it's kind of kind of like, an, you know, it's a, it's a rural area. It's a, um, they also teach like permaculture and like sustainable living. It's a very, very cool thing. We were like mm. camping in the woods. It was, it was incredible. Hmm. Okay, so I've got my seven pieces of soft flex here, and they're mostly lined up, but we're not gonna like lose sleep getting them exactly lined up. And this is a three by three crimp, and I'm just gonna get that on there. We're not, not going too far here. Now, remember I said we wanted to keep track of which one of these is the longest one. Well, it's this one here with the orange. So I'm going to take off just that one bead stopper and I'm going to slide that long wire up so that it's standing up taller than the others. Because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this long one and I'm going to U-turn and go back into the crimp bead. See where this is going? We're making a loop here. So later we can tie our threads onto this loop. So I took my long one, made a U-turn. I got a loop here. Now I want my loop yeah, in like the three to four millimeter range, but 
More important than the exact size is I would like the loop at this end of the necklace to be the same size as the loop on the other end of the necklace. So I'm gonna stick a toothpick in here and use that as a sizing guide. That's gonna help me get my loops close enough to the same size. Now, what I wanna double check before I do any crimping, I wanna make sure I haven't lost any wires. So let me just count this here. Let's see. One, two, three. Are you all there? One, two, three, four, five, six, and then that's the seventh. Okay. Whoops. Yep. Everybody's there. And I'm going to take my Mighty Crimper, and I'm going to crimp this Jumbo Crimp. And I'm, I'm going to leave the, the toothpick in there, because that's my little size guide. Okay, there we go. Now I can take my, my toothpick out. So working at the same end, right, where I just crimped it, we're going to take off these bead stoppers. Don't take the ones off this end yet. All your beads will fall off. Those bead stoppers right. are so handy. I'm telling Aren't they? You. They've it's like the best tool. So yes. I've heard them called tear stoppers. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's a great one. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, don't don't cry over spilled beads. Right, right, right. Use, use your tear stopper. All right. So I'm gonna let gravity here one one at a time. I'm lifting this up so that my beads fall down, and then I'm gonna scoot my bead stopper to take the, the slack out of that. I'm gonna do it for each one of these. I loved this comment and, by Gail. Mm -hmm. She said, I was asked to draw a dog at one of my jobs, but it came <laughs> out looking like a duck every time I tried. <laughs> I feel that. I feel, I feel that. that too, Gail. Hi, Suzanne. Thanks for joining us. Rebecca's in the middle of a beautiful, very sparkly design. Oh, so something to keep in mind while you're doing this, I have a, a thing to take off your list of items to worry about. We're not going to worry about which one of these um, wires is going where. They're all just going to go wherever they go and it will be beautiful. That's part of part of the, the vibe of this necklace is just letting them like crisscross however, however they, they choose to be in this moment. We're just gonna let them do that. So I've taken the slack out. So now my seed beads are all pushed towards the crimp bead on this end. And on the other end, we're gonna repeat. I'm gonna gather my tails. And this is where I'm, I'm not worrying about like what order I pick them up in. They're just, they're just doing their thing. I'm doing my thing. Just grabbing these here, lining up the ends. And then I'm going to get another one of these jumbo three by three crimps. Oh, Sarah, I have a question for you. Um, when we got our package of three by three crimps, it had a little like guide about like what crimper you should use for what crimp. And it said 
the list went all the way to three by five. Do you guys sell three by five millimeter crimps? That's giant. We used to, and I don't think we do anymore. And it just probably hasn't been updated. Okay. I mean, that makes sense. I was trying to think of when would I need this crimp to be two millimeters longer? I know. No, there, I think <laughs> it was like a, one of those short sighted things where somebody ordered mm -hmm. it that doesn't actually bead. And then I was oh, like, yeah. what, are we, what are we using? <laughs> <laughs> what are we using? Okay. So once upon a time, there was like an extra, extra long jumbo crimp. I think so. And I don't think we have it anymore. Okay. All right. So now I have my crimp bead on here. And I'm going to take off my bead stoppers. And I'm gonna slide my crimp bead down. And you, you've got seven of these guys. So like check, check all of them. This is like on any of your, um, your stringing projects where, you know, we're thinking Goldilocks here in terms of the tension, right? We don't want like a ton of exposed wire but on the other hand, if you pull them too tightly, then they, they don't drape quite right. So I like to, you know, pull them to where I think they are and then just sort of like check for bendy flexiness, um, you know, and like lay it down and go, okay, that's how it's gonna look. Am I happy with it? Now's the time to play with it. Um, once you crimp it, you can't really make any further adjustments. So, that's beautiful. Happy with that. Actually, love how that color combo came together. Um, so once again, we need to get a loop over here. Now, it, it doesn't matter which one of these. They're all about the same length. You can eyeball and go, oh, this one looks long. I'll use this one. So I'm going to U-turn, go back through the crimp. Do you even like see that? There we go. And then once again, I want to use that toothpick as like a placeholder, as like a size guide so that I can get the loops more or less the same size on both ends. So I've got my loop. And again, I'm just gonna like pull on my, my cords, make sure that I didn't, Oop. yep, that was a loose one that sort of dropped out while I was playing with the loop. So I'm just gonna, one at a time, play with these. This is where it's nice to have a turquoise colored wire because wh where there is that little gap underneath the crimp, it just looks so seamless, you know? Mm -hmm, exactly, no one will even know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? You, you don't have to like lose any sleep about it because the wire is beautiful. Mm -hmm. So that looks good, happy with that. Gonna grab that mighty crimper again. And there we go. All right. Get my toothpick out of there. The toothpick has done its job for now. Um, this is just like the one, the one part where I am going to insist that you like super seriously pay attention. Um, I try to let you know when it's important to like focus and when it's okay to not pay attention. We're going to be trimming off the excess wires. Don't cut the loops. That would be bad. It seems like a so. simple thing, but it does happen very easily if you're not paying attention. Mm -hmm. And it's a real bummer because then you have to start over. Yeah. And then it's very sad. Very, very sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. It's not the end of the world, but I want to like save you frustrating moments. Right. And I notice how she's cutting each one individually so she can get in close and tight too. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. One at a time. And that also helps me just ensure that I'm not cutting the loop. If every time I go in here, I'm like, nope, there should just be one wire 
in the jaws of my cutter, then one wire it is and I know that I'm safe. Great tip. I'm also holding the wire that I'm cutting off. Um, that's both so that it doesn't like fly up and hit me in the face, but also I find that helps me get a closer cut. Now the other side with the shorties, I actually think that's a little bit harder to, to trim, but you still do it the same where you get in here, get really close, and since I can't really grab this, I just put my fingertip on the end of it and it like sticks to your finger and doesn't fly anywhere. Um, best practice would of course be to wear safety glasses, um, but I'm not. So I'm gonna protect my eyes with my finger. And again, just look closely, make sure you're not cutting those loops off. And last one. Ta-da! So All right, so. Pretty. Look so if you that. have the kit, is that, isn't that fabulous? Just look at it how is, that's going to like yeah. sparkle and catch all the lights. You know what I love about wearing um, sparkly necklaces? It's um, mm -hmm. it's really sunny here in Tucson. I think you might, <laughs> might have noticed that on, <laughs> on trips here. Um, when I drive my car and I'm wearing a sparkly necklace, the crystals make little like rainbows and patches of light all over the roof of my car. <laughs> <laughs> and it just it brings me joy right it brings me joy to see that 365 days a year in that town <laughs> uh, yes yes oh my gosh that was like the biggest shock when we went to North Carolina so um it was cloudy we the whole camping. time yeah and it rained like all day um <laughs> so Richard was was camping was like hanging out at our camp while I was in class and they had brought their laptop to play The Sims and solar panels, which we normally take solar panels with us when we go camping. Oh. And um, <laughs> you know what? The solar panels just weren't really doing it. Oh no. In the, rain, in the woods. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't really work. Nope. Yeah. I, I did. In Arizona, I mean, having solar panels is key, you know, like that's easy, but yeah, or California for that matter. Yeah, right? Yeah. With the sun belt. <laughs> so um, in the kit, your cords are, are pre-cut. If you're working from your own stash, you're going to cut, cut four pieces and I've lined up the ends. They're folded in half. So I got, so here's like folded over end straight ends, and we need to get all of these through one of these loops. And I will I will see if I can do it on camera. Sometimes I have to bring it really close to my face. Her bravery of trying to do it on camera is just really getting me. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I think I'm getting maybe more nearsighted. <laughs> Oh, I'm that happens. I'm, I'm wearing reading glasses now. Yeah, okay, it come on. It certainly happens. So she's taking all the ends and putting them into the loop on the end. Mm -hmm. And they'll go, I promise you. But they go best when you don't have an audience. <laughs> Isn't that how everything works best? <laughs> yes. Oh, goodness. Oh, Rebecca, you did something silly. Okay, on my last two, I put them and go in the wrong direction. Oopsie. Try again, try again. Oopsie. I See, love... it's that audience thing I was talking about. Yeah, I love the turquoise with the little bit of purple. It's so pretty. These colors are really nice and saying they're really nice and that it's a great show. And she has like nine colorways. Do you still have a lot of these colorways available? 
All of those colors were available um, before the show started today. I double checked. Oh, awesome. So you see the website at the very bottom of the screen. If you want to nab this design in any of these colorways, uh, you can do that. And look, there's a beautiful little coupon code there. Softflex Friends, $20 off any kit order over $100. Um, but so many pretty ones. Let's see. What is your favorite? Oh, over the moon is really pretty. I love that one. Zest for life. Ooh. Isn't that I like fun? That, I just want that to top to middle rip. one. It's a little cut off the name, but it has like metallics in it. Silvers and coppers. It just, that one's really. Oh, like what is that? Uh, da dazzle them? I think. Oh, maybe. Yeah. That one's really nice. Very, okay. very cool. Right. So you can go to their website and get any of these colorways as of the beginning of the show um, and uh, make this yourself. This video will be available for replay. Okay, I did it. I got them all through. And I've been pulling, 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 pulling. And now here's the loop. I'm going to take all eight of those tails and pull them through the loop. Doo, 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 doo. And this makes a little knot here. I'm just going to pull the cords individually to tidy this up. There you go. That gets my, my loose threads there. So this is a lark's head knot. So now we've tied our super lawn. This is what we're going to braid with. We've tied this to our soft flex loop. Here's our crimp, here's our focal beads. Now we're going to hide our work with a cone. Did you guys see this like smooth operation she's got going on here? Like what a clean connection that is. You almost don't even need a cone. It yeah, looks it really so does. nice. But the cone will just like add that little bit of mm -hmm. extra. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. What a beautiful connection. So I'm going to use my big eye needle to get these threads through the cone. Um, I'm going to do two threads at a time until I get to the last two. Then I'll have to switch to one at a time. Make sure you start at the big end and exit the little end. For the kit, we went through and we measured the openings of all of the cones to make sure that they are big enough. Let me look at my supply list. Um, they need to have a 1.8 millimeter hole. That is the manufacturing standard on these tear cast cones, but like any uh, manufactured item, there is some variation. So occasionally you get one um, where the hole is too small. Mm. If that, if you're working from your own cones, don't cry. It will be okay. Take just regular round nose pliers, stick the cone on here, and just give it a gentle wiggle and a push. Mm. Pewter's really soft, and it'll open right up. So no worries. But if you got the kit, we already double-checked that for you and made sure that all your cones were good to go. Awesome. That's the nice thing about getting a kit. They do all those little details, mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. Yeah. You know you have the yeah, right so place to make the project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but everything will come, you know, label, you know, exactly what's what. Wow. It's nice to have it grab and go. Mm -hmm. If you're loving this project, make sure you click that thumbs up sign and that heart sign. Share it with a friend who you think would also like it. Um, maybe even make a beading date with someone and make this project together. This is a great like sit and stitch sort of project um, where you could put Rebecca on the screen, whether you're together or apart, you know, do it over Zoom or um, do it together in person and um, sit and stitch a, a beautiful necklace together. Pick different That's a colors great idea. and see what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, my best girlfriend lives uh, between Arizona and Texas, and I don't get to see her as often as I would like. So over the years, mm -hmm. we've 
really figured out some ways that we can hang out still. <laughs> and those That's are often awesome. like a craft project or a movie that we watch together, you know, like it's, and it's really nice because I really miss her. Um, and it does give us that opportunity, even with our busy lives and mm -hmm. being far away from each other. All right. Well, we're keeping an eye on the time here. So we are going to switch to the, uh, the cooking show magic. You're dun, doing dun, dun. <laughs> Okay. So here's what it looks like, right? We've got everything pulled through the cone. And then you what pull color up. Is that one? This one. Okay, let me look. Let's see the beads. Oh, it's is it over the moon? Over the moon. That's yep, the this is over the moon. Implementing. Let's see that. Mm -hmm. see the beads. Yep. Oh, so pretty. Yep, this is over the moon. Ooh, I know a lot of people yeah, out so there love blue. This yeah, is a good so blue. it's got got the the black and the blue and um silver. some of these like sil the silver ones i don't know if it'll catch mm -hmm. it on camera but like the crystal itself it's silver with like a flash of blue inside of it mm. it's really pretty so once you get everything on here then you're going to string your beads. I didn't want to torture you and make you like watch mm -hmm. me string beads so I did <laughs> pre-string my beads so we're going to be what using size eight seed beads. What is your expected Sorry? finish size of the necklace? So I actually have three charts. You make your um, your sizing changes in the braid. So this this purple one that I made. Let me find my streaming chart. Um, it's about eighteen and three quarters. But we also have stringing charts for 21 and three quarters and 25 inches. So in the kit, you have enough materials to go up to 25 inches long. Oh, that's nice. You got a choice there, Stephanie, to decide mm -hmm. how long or, or short to make it. Yeah. Yeah, whenever possible, I like to um, to have more than one finish length in, the, in any of the directions or in the kits because... I know that people like different lengths, people come in different sizes. So mm -hmm. that way you can make your necklace in different sizes, right? Because if you're making it yourself, you should make it for you <laughs> or, you know, or for whomever the intended wearer is, you know, like make it to, right. to fit yeah, them. That's great. What a nice treat for whoever gets this kit. They're going to be able to make that choice. I love that. Mm hmm all right, so normally when we're doing kumihimo with beads, we would attach a center weight. We actually um, don't necessarily need one here because we have um, this focal area to act as, as a center weight. If when you're getting it started, um, if you're having difficulty getting the beads to lock in, feel free to, to clip your, your center weight to this loop of of soft flex at the end if you need it. Sometimes I can help get your, your beads in. So we're gonna start braiding with no beads. So if you're new to Kumihimo, gonna give you a crash course right here. We also have on our website a free PDF. You can download the Beaded Kumihimo Starter Guide that like really, really fully detailed goes through all of the steps of braiding with beads. And then we have another free PDF, understanding the braid that explains about counted patterns. Cause that's what's, that's what's happening here with this color changing. This is all achieved by the specific order in which you string your beads, right? Like so many of the light purple, so many silver, so many dark purple that makes it change colors. So if you've not done it before, just like read through those. So crash course in Kumihimo. The top of the disc is the side that's farthest from you. The bottom of the disc is the side that's closest to you. You got to keep track of left and right. Uh, we will be rotating the disc. It doesn't matter which direction you rotate it. It would be swell if you could keep track of which direction you're rotating, but it actually doesn't make any difference. It will not mess up your project. If you're turning left for a while and then later you're turning right, it won't make any difference whatsoever. 
Um, when I'm braiding here on camera, my crystals and later my braid, they're resting here on the table. Um, that's just because of how I have my camera set up. What you want um, when you're working at home, everything should be hanging freely. You don't want to have your braid sitting on the table because that makes it more likely that your beads are going to dislodge and you'll have to go back and fix them. So ignore what you see here when they're going to be sitting on the table. That's just to keep it in frame for me. Weight is good at the bottom when you're doing yes. Kumi Hume. Yes, you can use one of these clip-on center weights. So before we start doing any beads, we're going to do eight moves, no beads. And that's to get all of our cords to the correct orientation and give us a place to lock our beads in. So it's going to be top right down. That's one. And then bottom left up. That's two. Going to turn the disc. Top right down. That's three. Bottom left up. That's four. Top right down. Five. Bottom left up six, top right down, seven, bottom left up, eight. So now we're ready for beads. On other projects where you're just like braiding from end to end, you would make a much longer section without any beads and that would get cut off and hidden under the end cap. But since we're going right from this cone, we want those beads to start as quickly as possible to make a nice clean setup here. So when you do it with beads, same thing, top right down, but now we're gonna take one bead and tuck it under that first perpendicular warp that it comes to. So it's right there, bottom left up, get that bead in there. And be really patient with yourself on the first couple of moves. Those are the fiddliest, especially when we're doing something like, like this and you're right next to the cone. You don't have a lot of room to work. So be gentle, be patient. Top right down, just tuck that bead in. And bottom left up. So this is where Rebecca was talking about the beads popping out. If you don't have weight underneath it, the weight mm -hmm. helps those beads to lock into place and not pop out of, of their space. This is all looking so good and clear. Really fantastic project, Rebecca. Thanks. So this is what it can look like if your bead isn't locked in all the way. All right, this one didn't get locked in at all. It's sitting on top. And if you were to see that, you would just lift it up and tuck it back where it belongs. Now, my number one tip for beginners who are learning Kumihimo is always stop at a stopping point. Stopping point is when you have three at the bottom. All right, so I just did top right down. I've got three here and I can walk away from this. I can go do anything else. And when I come back, I can pick this up and go, okay, here are my three, they're at the bottom. And I know where I left off. I know that this one came down and now it's time to do bottom left up. These are great projects that you can do and set set aside or like do on a trip even. Um, mm -hmm. If you pre-string all of your beads and it's all set up and you're just sitting and you can like get out and go to the restroom and come back and fiddle with a book and then pick it back up again and know where you're at. It's really, really love a lovely, very meditative process. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, once you have your, your beads strung, you, you don't have to be sitting at a, at a table anymore. This is nice to do 
um, sitting on your sofa, watching TV. Mm -hmm. Totally. So this just keeps going. You just go around and around and around and around. And since you've counted out the beads, when you're out of beads, you're, you're at the end, right? They're all gonna finish up together. And when you're out of beads, you're gonna keep braiding about a half inch with no beads because we're going to need a place to bind off so that we can cut the braid and glue our end caps on. So do so the effervescent necklace it's made with size eight seed beads like this here. And then at the very end, you have some size 11s that tapers the braid so that it fits into a six millimeter end cap. So that's what we have here. And then you see I braided about a half inch with no beads and that's where I'm going to do the binding. So when you've braided all of that, you've braided all the beads, you've braided your little nubbin, no beads, then you can take off the bobbins hold everything below the point of braiding, pop it off the disc and tie an overhand knot. That will keep everything secure until you're ready to do the finishing. I can show you guys real quick how to do binding. This is just a beaded rope I have here for this part of the demo. I'll actually show you guys how to do the binding twice. I'm going to do it once with this like really big stuff and then I'll do it again with like the real size. Um, and this is because binding um, sometimes intimidates people. I, I have heard of people having growing collections of kumihimo braids that have not yet become necklaces because people <laughs> are, are nervous about finishing them off. We need so, no tears binding. That needs to be your next book. Rebecca. Well, I'm going to show you no tears binding right now. This, this is, this is doable. It's super doable. So here's, here's my braid. Here's my knot. And I'm going to do this first demo with a piece of rat tail because it's nice and big and you can see what's happening. So I'm going to fold it unevenly. So there's a long side and a short side. And I'm going to put my, my loop on here. And you're going to take the long side and wrap around the braid. And as I wrap around, it's going to wrap on top of the short tail of my binding thread. I'm just going to go around, say like four or five times. It's kind of awkward with the rat tail because it's super jumbo, but it's easier to see on camera this way, but you see how those wraps are next to each other? That's what you want. I'm going around. Okay, that's enough wrapping. So what's happening here? I've got my wraps. I've got my tail that's covered by the wraps and I've got a loop. I need to take the long side as my working thread and it needs to go through the loop. Um, if you're comfortable with this maneuver, you, you can do that. Sometimes I like to reposition my hands. That's cool. But you have to hold on to these wraps while you're repositioning. If you let go of those wraps before we're done, it's going to go spring and unravel. So just, just keep them pinched. So this is a, a more comfortable position for me. I've got my long thread. I'm going to go through that loop. Take the tail, the tail's just been hanging out this whole time. And when I pull it, look to see how the loop's closing, the loop's closing, and then I can grab my other tail and pull it, pull these in opposite directions. Ta-da, that's my binding. 
So let's see it real deal on top of a beaded braid. It's going to be harder to see. So I've got some red thread for contrast. So as this is coming off the spool, I'm going to tug it because it comes off curly and it will be easier to work with if it's not curly. So I'm going to cut about 18 inches of thread. Again, relax that. And I'm going to fold it unevenly in half. There's a long side and a short side. And I go back and forth about which way I want to hold this thing. It's because it works either direction, right? So let's try it this way. So here are my beads down here. Let's see if we can go like slightly zoomed in, but I'll still stay in frame. There we go. So here's my loop and I'm going to place it just past the beads. My thumb of my non-dominant hand is holding the loop and the beads at the very end of the braid. Um, you can potentially, I just cut my nails really short, but you could potentially kind of hold it down on the nubbin with your fingernail. I take the long thread and the long thread wraps around the nubbin and it's also wrapping around that tail as I go around. So I want you to notice as I go around, I'm catching the thread, too zoomed. I'm catching the thread uh, between my fingers to sort of act as a third hand. So again, we're just doing like three to five wraps. You want them next to each other, that's good. Now I need to take the working end of my thread and I need to go through this loop that's under my thumb. But again, that's weird and awkward for me. So I'm just gonna reposition everybody. I'm pinching those wraps so they can't go anywhere. Take the working end of the thread, go through the loop, through the loop. Now we don't wanna catch any beads, so now's the time to look at that. Don't catch the beads. All right, I'm holding everything here. Pull the tail, do, 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 do. The loop's closing, it's closing, it's closing. Whoop, there it is. Tug in opposite directions. See that, ta-da, ta-da. And then I just like to tie a little extra like square knot or granny knot dealio on here. Which is like left over right and right over left, right? Opposite direction. Yep. Yeah. Left over right, right over left. That makes a square. Or if you do left over left, left over left, that's, um, that's a granny knot. Sometimes I forget that I have a phone, but my phone's ringing <laughs> like the store's <laughs> phone. So Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. You're going to hear like my answering machine too in a minute. <laughs> I was going to about myself and, and I can't turn it off. Hopefully it's not, hopefully it's not too of a risque of a message. <laughs> um, I would I be surprised. <laughs> risque messages you're getting there. <laughs> Hello, do you have beads? I need yeah. beads. <laughs> you are a little off screen so we can't see. Oh, there, there, we, we, there we go. There, there we, we go. go. Too, too much zoom. All right, so I've tied my little square knot and here's, here's the nubbin. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trim the tails of my binding thread, that's the red thread. Trim it really close there. I don't need that. And then when you go to cut this, you just cut really, really close right there. I'm so stressed okay. for you. Are you really going to cut it? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I can. Um, oh my gosh. I so you actually have like, and then, and then what happened? Let me uh, open up the kit here. And since I, I don't have my real deal when finished. If I made so, it, I probably have like 12 of these stacked up, I bet. <laughs> No. So that's what you can do with your with your friends. You can set up a, a virtual like finish it party Ooh. and you can provide moral support for each other while you're like binding and cutting. That 
in fact, that's a good idea for you, Rebecca, is have a finish it Friday, like every once in a while and invite mm. people to come hang out and finish off there. That's right. Design. Just bind, cut, glue, bind, cut, glue. That's <laughs> all there is. <laughs> so, yeah, let me talk about like the essentials of finishing one of these. You want nice, sharp scissors because we're going to just whoop, just going to cut right through that. You want to have your end cap for your project. I use E6000 to glue these. E6000 is the most amazing glue ever. Um, why I like it is because it's a flexible bond, which is really important for um, for jewelry, right? Because our, mm -hmm. our jewelry moves with our body. So you don't want something that's going to be brittle when it dries. E6000 is like, uh, like the texture of rubber cement, but much, much stronger. Um, I also like it because it does not bond to skin. And that's really important mm -hmm. for a person like me who has trouble gluing without um, gluing fingers together. Mm -hmm. um, other, other essential tools, that toothpick is nice. And you want like a, um, like a scrap piece of paper. So... I'm not really gonna glue because this end cap doesn't go on here, but I will cut it. I'm not afraid to cut it. But I will say this before cutting, before cutting, <laughs> best practice, do not cut this and then not glue the end cap on. You can't cut it and throw it in the, I'll do it later pile. If you need to do it later, that's cool. Don't cut it until you're ready <laughs> to do something yeah. with it. <laughs> right. It's, it's not going to explode, but if you just like leave it unattended indefinitely, eventually the binding will just like walk off the end if you haven't glued something there. Um, there are some like projects where, where we do that, but then we take like a, a zapper and we melt the end together. Um, but the key to cutting is bravery. Just boop, do it. Ah, see, it's fine. <laughs> oh my gosh. You it's fine. Ready. It didn't explode. It didn't go anywhere. Um, but look, let's let's look super close. All right. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Do you see how like this one's like a fractional micrometer longer than this one over here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Ignore that. That's fine. Don't don't give a haircut. Don't futz with it. Mm -hmm. It's it's fine now. Um, and then you're gonna take something. Yeah, it's going inside. No one's gonna see it. And no good will come of it. I promise you, if you're giving haircuts to this thing, just, just don't do it. Don't do it. So you're going to take like a pea size blob, just like for, for reference. What does a pea size, like a, your blob of glue needs to be smaller than your end cap, right? So if this is a six millimeter end cap, this is like a five millimeter blob. Mm -hmm. um, and you're going to take your, take your glue, just going to pretend and just going to smear it in here. Mm -hmm. We don't want to get any on the outside. If you do have some on the outside, just take your toothpick and rub it off. It'll, it'll ball up like rubber cement and just, just take it away. Mm -hmm. And then this is just a push and twist operation. It fits right on there. Look, look how nicely that fits. Whoa. Right. It's, it's perfect. Yeah. So that's great. You, you get that on there. And then the hardest part, seriously, is waiting. You need to let mm. it dry 24. I mean, do both ends and then let it dry. Mm -hmm. um, what I like to do, um, since I am not the only person who is in my studio, when I'm done gluing a piece, I will get some blue painter's tape and I will tape it to a table and I'll get like a Sharpie and I'll write on there tomorrow's date. Mm. Like I would write like RTW ready to wear and then five, four, 4 PM. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that when someone comes along and they're like, can I clear this table? Oh, no, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet. Uh -huh. um, or, you know, if you're, if you're at home and you have like pets or small children, you could um, you could tape it to like a paper plate and like put it in a drawer or something where nobody mm -hmm. will. Yeah, so just Good let it dry and then you can 
And then just put your um, your magnet on after everything is dry. Can we see the final design again? Yeah. And the end of it yeah. so that we can just visualize yeah. that finishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we've got our end caps here. And then this is a magnetic, whoops, just jump there, magnetic clasp. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool. And those are tiara yeah. casts, right? They are. Yep. These are tiara casts. Um, we have these on our website. We sell the, a set with the end cap, the uh, the magnet clasp, and then the jump rings to put it all together. So that's just like those, a grab and go. Are those that's double little, jump rings? Like, you doubled up? I, I did. It, that is unnecessary. <laughs> Um, we, we include four, we include four jump rings in there in case you, um, you know, drop one, mangle one, whatever. Um, one jump ring per side is perfect, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's totally, totally fine. But, um, since every time I open one of these packages, there are four jump rings, I just put the extra jump rings on. I'm like, why not? Yeah. I think yeah. it looks kind of cool. Mm -hmm. No, I like it. I think it's good. Yeah. And it just gives it like that little bit of extra security too, because it's not mm -hmm. going to yeah. from that middle point. Yeah. Cool. If, if one jump ring failed, you have a backup. Yeah. I love that. That was a really fun design, Rebecca. Thanks. It's really, really pretty. I love all the different colorways. In fact, pop those colorways up one more time. Yeah. And I'll focus in on you. These are the colorways that are available. The website is listed at the bottom of the screen. Use discount code SOFTLEX FRIENDS uh, to get $20 off an over $100 order with a kit in it. And um, yeah, that's, I mean, this was but just so much fun to be able to spend time with you and check out this really cool, what looks like a very complicated design, but you made it seem really doable and simple and, um, and manageable. Thanks. Yeah. It's just a matter of doing it one step at a time, right? It's just like a series of small steps. And then you have this beautiful necklace. Awesome. Well, I suggest you get one for you and a friend and you do it together. I think that's a really lovely uh, design to be able to do with someone else. Um, and you can find that again on the website that is listed at the bottom of the screen. Do not forget, this is your last day for pre-order on the Czech uh, Glass Curated Collection. In fact, I just looked on my capped number, I am 80% sold out. So now there's only 20% left that we can sell uh, moving forward. So if you want one of those check glass curated collections, get in there and order as soon as possible at softflexcompany.com. I'm trying to think about what our sale is this week, but it's just off the tip of my tongue and I can't think of it. Maybe Thomas can post it into the comments. We loaded a new sale this week. Kristen is on vacation this week. If you're wondering where she was on Monday, she should be back next Monday. Um, and I will be back next Tuesday with our next uh, live sale. Um, we have Joyce started, Joyce Trowbridge. So I'm slowly giving the procurement stuff back to her, but it's still a lot of work. So um, <laughs> if you're wondering why, why we're a little more absent than normal, that's why we're still getting her trained and ready to go. Oh, bulk sale. Yeah, if you want to buy 100 foot or 1000 foot spools of Softflex, you get a sweet discount. You can find out more on our website softlexcompany.com. And I think that's it for me. Rebecca, you're launching a new kit once or twice a month. Is that right? We are. Yeah. So um, our next one, the sample's not quite ready. I'm still playing with it. Let me look on the calendar. So it's not going to be this weekend. It's going to be next weekend. I have a new, new bracelet in the works. It's just a this, this is where, where kits come from. They start with a teeny tiny Ooh, <laughs> little proof of concept sample. Petals. Yeah, they're petals. They're petals and it's flat on the back. Cool. Flat on the back, petals on the front. It'll be a, a cute little, oh, that's little bracelet. Nice. 
Where can they I, first I know that it learn works. about your new kits? Should they get on your email list? Should they? Yes. That's Facebook? You should do all of those things, but I'm way better about sending emails than Facebooking. Mm -hmm. So if you go to designandadorn.com and just scroll down, there's a, a little link where you can get on the, the emails. Awesome. And uh, Rebecca will be back with us for Customer Appreciation Week uh, coming up in the fall. I just sent an email to all of our friends who are joining us. All 10 companies who were with us last September are rejoining us in uh, September 2023. So we will have another fun design coming up with Rebecca, if not sooner, because that seems like a long way from now. And um, and. And uh, all of our other friends will be with us as well. Abby Berta from the Bead Place and, oh, Sam's Bead Shop, Jesse James Beads, um, Silver, Silver Silk and more. Uh, all of your favorites are going to be with us. So uh, keep an eye posted for that um, coming up as well. Kit launch will be in August. And uh, it's going to be a really fun week-long event again. I'm so glad you're going to participate, Rebecca. Me too. I love the SoftFlex Customer Appreciation Week. The last it's couple have really been so much fun. fun. It, and it goes so smoothly. I'm always just mm -hmm. uh, in awe of how great the participants are. All the presenters are so professional and it just like just rolls out over the week and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And Russell awesome. says no, that's, when she, that's when um, she became a fan. She or he became a fan of you. Awesome. We love awesome. that. We get to share all our favorite people with you that week. All right. Well, thank you very much, Rebecca. Thank you everyone for watching. And uh, you can find out more about our company, Softflex Company, at softflexcompany.com. And you can find out more about Rebecca and her company at designanddorn.com. We will catch you next time. All right. Thanks for having me on. This was so much fun.